What are the best exercises for tarsal tunnel syndrome? If you have tarsal tunnel syndrome, then this video is for you. I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm going to explain what causes tarsal tunnel syndrome, some exercises for tarsal tunnel syndrome, as well as other treatment options for tarsal tunnel syndrome. Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We help people to stay active, mobile, and healthy without relying on pain medications, injections, or surgeries. So first of all, what is tarsal tunnel syndrome? Tarsal tunnel syndrome is a compression of structures that run through the tarsal tunnel. And the tarsal tunnel is made up by a little ligament that goes over the inside of your ankle from that bump or malleolus over to your heel. And inside of the tarsal tunnel, there are several different structures that run. There are tendons that go to your toes, as well as tendons that help maintain the arch of your foot. There is the tibial nerve, and then the tibial artery, and the tibial vein. But the primary structure that's involved in most cases of tarsal tunnel syndrome is the tibial nerve. Now the tibial nerve, it splits and forms your plantar nerves, the medial plantar nerve and the lateral plantar nerve. And the symptoms of tarsal tunnel syndrome actually get mistaken as plantar fasciitis. So what are those symptoms of tarsal tunnel syndrome? Well, largely they're pain on the bottom of your foot, burning on the bottom of your foot, or sometimes numbness or tingling in your heel or even in your toes. And that can often be mistaken as plantar fasciitis. Tarsal tunnel syndrome is often worse when you take the first step down in the morning after having not moved all night, not getting oxygen to the nerve. And so a lot of times people do get misdiagnosed. So what causes tarsal tunnel syndrome? Well, the most common cause of tarsal tunnel syndrome is overpronating or flattening your foot out too much when you're standing or when you're walking or when you're running or doing other activities. There are other things that can cause it, like swelling in your foot can put pressure inside that tarsal tunnel, inside that tarsal tunnel. or if you have a ganglion cyst on the tibial nerve, that can take up space inside the tarsal tunnel but largely the biggest cause of tarsal tunnel syndrome is that overpronation or over flattening of your foot when you're standing or walking for long periods of time. And so how do you prevent tarsal tunnel syndrome? Well, the biggest way that you do it is you stop that cause. You prevent that overpronation when you're walking or when you're running, and that helps stop the symptoms of tarsal tunnel syndrome. So what are the exercises that you can use to help prevent that overpronation? Well, largely they have to do with strengthening your arch muscles in your foot, strengthening the muscles in your ankle, the nerve, the posterior tibialis that runs on the inside through the tarsal tunnel is actually one muscle that helps prevent overpronation. So you do want to do things to strengthen that muscle as well. Additionally, doing nerve glides for the tibial nerve can help provide movement and oxygen to that nerve to help it stay as healthy as possible. And so I'll show you a couple exercises that you can do. The first exercise is largely just working on the foot or arch muscles to maintain the arch. And so to do that, you're gonna kind of scrunch your toes, form like a short foot, bring the front part of the foot towards the back part of the foot while you're standing. And so that would look something like this, where you're slightly curling the toes and lifting the arch and keeping it domed, keeping it from falling down. And then you're going to progress that by trying to balance on one leg while you keep that arch lifted. And that's what you do every time you take a step. When you walk or when you run, you land on one foot over and over and over again. And if you're constantly flattening down or over pronating when you're walking or when you're running, it can stretch the structures that run through the tarsal tunnel and pull them taut and over time, that can create an injury to them. So if you're excessively pronating by allowing your foot to flatten too much, then you can cause tarsal tunnel syndrome. So again, the first exercise is just doming your arch. And then when you can do that, progressing to standing and balancing. Now you can progress that even further by doing little mini squats. Again, trying to keep that arch domed. And that gets a little bit harder to do. So make sure that you have your balance down and that you can just stand on one foot with your arch domed before you progress to doing that mini squat. Now, what's another exercise for tarsal tunnel syndrome? 
Well, one major cause of overpronation is stiffness in your calf muscles. And so if your calf muscles are stiff, then your body has to find a way to get your weight out in front of the foot. And if it can't do it by stretching your calf muscles, it's going to do it by finding an alternate route, which usually that's overpronating. And so stretching your calf muscles is really important, but a lot of people stretch their calf muscles incorrectly because they allow the foot to flatten while they stretch their calves. And that does allow you to get further into the stretch. It may feel like more of a stretch or burn, but it doesn't stretch the areas of your calves that you need to stretch to prevent overpronation. So when you're stretching your calves, just like doming your arch before, you want to start by doming your arch and then stretching and keeping your heel flat on the ground. So you want to have the arch domed and keeping the heel flat on the ground. You may or may not actually feel a stretch like this. You may just feel like you can't go any farther, but that's okay. It's more important to keep your foot from overpronating than it is to go super far into the calf stretch. So that's the second exercise, is stretching your calves. Now, what's another exercise that you can do for tarsal tunnel syndrome? Well, when you get to the end range of taking a step when you're walking or when you're going to push off when you run, you need to be able to move from a pronated position um, to a supinated position or increasing the dome of your arch as you go to push off. That makes your foot a rigid lever so that you can push off of it and go on to take your next step. And so doing heel raises is one good way to do that. And when you're doing the heel raises, you don't want to allow your knees to kind of knock together like that or for the pressure to come too far inwards that way. You want to try to keep your Achilles tendons going straight up and down and moving up and down like that. And then if you can do that, you can progress to doing it on one leg. For most people, including mostly myself, it's good to hold on to something to have a little bit of extra balance when you're doing single leg heel raises. But that's the way that you would progress the heel raises is starting on two legs, making sure that you can keep your Achilles tendons moving straight up and down and not allowing your heel to go in or outwards too much. And then progressing from there and moving to one leg. And again, if you need to hold on for that one legged heel raise, that's perfectly fine to do that. Now, what's the final exercise that you can use for tarsal tunnel syndrome? Well, I mentioned before that doing nerve glides can help the tibial nerve, which runs through the tarsal tunnel. The tibial nerve is a branch of your sciatic nerve, which comes off of your lumbar spine, runs through your hip, runs down the back of your leg, and then splits into the tibial nerve, which is involved in tarsal tunnel syndrome, and the fibular nerve, um, which goes down the outside of your leg and into the top of your foot. And so doing the tibial nerve glide, what you start with is start with your foot turned outward. That kind of tensions the tibial nerve around the ankle. And then you'll start with the foot turned out and then just kind of kick up and down like that. You can add a little more tension by going into a slump position and just going back and forth like that with the foot kind of turned outward so it puts tension on the tibial nerve around the ankle. Now, a key point with nerve glides is you don't want to do them to the point of pain. Um, it's just designed to get movement and oxygen to the nerves, and nerves need three things to be healthy. They need space to move, they need movement, and they need oxygen. And if they're not getting that, that movement and oxygen, then they're not going to be healthy. But likewise, if they're compressed from either overpronating or swelling inside the tarsal tunnel, they're also not going to be healthy. And so this particular exercise just works on getting some movement and oxygen to the nerve, but you don't want the nerve to hurt when you're doing it. So keep in a range where you can do it comfortably without causing pain. So what are some other treatments besides exercises that can help if you have tarsal tunnel syndrome? Well, if it's an ankle problem, you would think that an ankle brace might be helpful. And for some extreme cases, if you just don't have the stability in your ankle to prevent yourself from overpronating and your symptoms have gotten really bad, wearing an ankle brace can be a short-term solution to help ease the symptoms of tarsal tunnel syndrome. But largely, it's not a good long-term fix because when you're inside that ankle brace, your calves also tend to get stiff and that creates more of an issue down the road. So wearing an ankle brace can be a good short-term solution. But a better option, if your symptoms aren't just really, really, really bad, 
is wearing orthotics or insoles in your shoes to help prevent overpronation. For some people who don't have really bad sy symptoms, um, just an over-the-counter pair of insoles can be helpful. And I, I can link to some that we recommend. Uh, uh, Superfeed is one brand that we commonly recommend to patients. Um, but if you have a little bit more severe of a problem or you've got kind of an awkward foot type, you may need custom orthotics. And if you do and you happen to be in the St. Louis area, we can get you fit for custom orthotics at More for Life. Um, just contact our, our, our office and we'll get you scheduled for uh, an assessment for orthotics. So what are other treatments besides exercises and bracing and orthotics that can help tarsal tunnel syndrome? Well, other treatments for tarsal tunnel syndrome include physical therapy. Now, if you think that physical therapy is just doing stretches and exercises, that is one part, but largely physical therapy, at least the way we do it at More for Life, is focused on finding the root cause of the problem, figuring out what movement patterns are causing the overpronation, what muscles are involved, is it just at the foot or are there problems at the hip as well? a problem with your running technique. So those are all things that we would address in our type of physical therapy, as well as doing hands-on techniques like joint manipulations or um, soft tissue treatments to the calves to help keep them from being so stiff or dry needling. Those are all good treatment options that can be provided at physical therapy, along with exercises for tarsal tunnel syndrome. And finally, what are the last resort options for tarsal tunnel syndrome? Well, you can get injections in the tarsal tunnel or you can get surgery to release that ligament or flexor retinaculum on the inside of the ankle. Um, but those truly are last resort options. It, the recovery from that surgery can take up to 12 months and the results are variable. There's no um, guarantee that you'll get a great result afterwards. So if you would like to avoid surgery for your tarsal tunnel syndrome and get it feeling better naturally, we'd be happy to help you out. Again, just contact our office and we'll get you scheduled for an appointment if you happen to be in the St. Louis area. And if you're watching this from somewhere else, but you found some of these tips helpful to better understand your tarsal tunnel syndrome and learn some exercises that you can use to treat it, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.